This is part two of the A4RA transaxle rebuild from a Honda Civic. Um, so here we have the main valve body. I am putting the pump gears in. See how that has that groove side in? Um, that groove side faces up. Put the two pump gears in. And we're going to measure the clearances between the walls of each pump gear and it has to be within spec so just uh, put a feeler gauge in there and look at the tolerances in the service manual okay now we're going to take out the uh, driven gear shaft and put something straight across it like the screwdriver we're going to measure the clearance underneath the screwdriver uh, between the screwdriver and the driven gear and measure that tolerance uh, next we have the servo control valve um, I didn't have my punch that's this skinny broke so I had to find the best thing I could I had this little drill bit that seemed to work uh, so just punch out the little uh, pin and then flip it over pull the pin out with uh, some sort of pliers and then uh, the cap will come out along with the valve and spring so yeah sometimes you have to use your pick to sort of guide the valve along to get out of there so each valve you want to coat in transmission fluid and you want to drop it into the valve body and let it see if it falls under its own weight. This is an example of what you of a valve that is not good. You see how I have to push it down, it doesn't fall all the way down the bore under its own weight. And now you see I even have to shake it and uh, even tap it to let it fall down. That tells you that this bore needs some polishing. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So, but just keep in mind you have to do that for every single valve, even though I'm not going to show every single one in this video. This next one is the modulator valve. Uh, oh no, this one's actually the relief valve, sorry about that. Yes, yeah, the small one. There it is. So, here's an example of a valve that drops under its own weight. See how it just drops, it goes all the way down to the bottom, I don't need to help it along, and then it comes right back out. Uh, this one is the modulator valve. So there's these little, uh, you know, uh, stops that you can pull out and a lot of times it makes the spring push up against the bore so you need to push down on the spring there we go put the spring out and then help the valve along with your pick be careful when you're doing the pick you don't want to scratch the valve body or make any burrs or nicks because that can cause a valve to hang up so this one's going to be the CPB valve same way as the other ones. That one you have to help along a little bit. Uh, this next one's going to be the one two shift valve. This video is just essentially going to be me removing all the valves. There's the one two shift valve with the spring and then we have the second oh here's another example of a valve that's good and drops under its own weight see so it just goes right down and then it comes right back out that's a good valve <coughs> okay uh, now we have the second orifice control valve this is the last valve in the main valve body taking out the cap first I 
Okay, now we're, we're moving on to the secondary valve body. We have these two feed pipes that come out, and they're different lengths, so keep track of which one goes where. <coughs> Take out the bolts. We have one shorter bolt with that little bracket, and then we have two longer bolts that are the same size. Put them to the side. Uh, we have this little feed pipe down there, and uh, this first one is going to be the three-four orifice control valve. It's the same sort of thing. We had to punch out the uh, pin and uh, grab it from the bottom. Some sort of pliers, pull it out. And notice, I always put my whenever you're taking valves out, always put your finger over the valve because. You never know what kind of valve is going to be under spring pressure and it could fly across the room. You'll see that a couple times in this video actually. So helping the valve along. Okay, next we have the um, <coughs> fourth exhaust valve. We got this little tab here stopping it. I notice I put my finger over it. There's the spring. And then. Valve is coming. There's the valve. It's a little one. Uh, next is the three-four shift valve. Take out this little uh, hook here. Pull out the uh, cap. And there's the valve. And. The last valve in this valve body is the 2 3 shift valve. It's got another one of these little tabs or uh, little pins here, whatever you want to call them. And then the valve comes out with this spring. And now we're, now we're moving on to the regulator valve body. Uh, taking out these little feed pipes and first, and then we have the the springs I mentioned in the previous video, they're the cooler relief valve and the torque converter check valve. And uh, take those out. Real easy to come out. Those springs are the same in the Civic, as I said in the last one, the last video. Uh, this is the lock off control valve. Just punch the pin out, grab the pin with, pl with uh, pliers. Notice my fingers over the the bore is and then take the cap out and the valve comes right out okay now we're there's a lock bolt that holds in the regulator spring and cap so careful as you see in this video boom it goes flying take it out and underneath the spring and the cap is going to be um, the regulator valve. And that's the, that's the only thing in the regulator valve body. Now we're moving on to the servo body. Uh, these bolts are different lengths. So I'm just taking them out and laying them on the table in sort of the position they came out of. So I can put it back in the same, put them back in the same way they came. Uh, we got this little feed pipe, taking that out. And uh, we have the servo valve slash shift fork valve. Okay, this little snap ring that holds this on. Snapping pliers. The snap ring kind of went flying when it popped out. So this is the th this is the third accumulator piston. Let's take it out of the body. Uh, next we have the fourth accumulator piston. This one has another snap ring, but you have to pry it off either a pick or a screwdriver there we go, it comes right out now next we have the uh, first accumulator piston same thing with the, you gotta pry the snap ring and it uh, comes right out and last we have the second accumulator piston <clears throat> it has a little snap ring around the inner circumference and you have to just push it in with uh, some sort of pliers and then get one side to come out 
and then just pry off, pry it out with a screwdriver. There we go, it comes out like that. And then uh, to get the actual, the rest of it out, you just blow compressed air through the, the port right there, and it'll push it out. Whenever I blow compressed air through a valve body, I always like to bring it down to around 30 PSI, just to be safe. Even though I'm replacing the seals, it doesn't matter, I just like to be safe anyway. Alright, lastly we have the lockup valve body. Taking the bolts out in the orientation that they come out so I can put it back in the same way. We have this feed pipe. And uh, there are two valves on this. This first one is going to be the lockup shift valve. I just hammered that out like before. Pulled it out with pliers. go. And then lastly, after this, we have the lockup timing valve, which is held on by, with, by that little pin, and it'll come right out. And uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.